Hi, it's Jess here from nigessa.co.uk. Thank you for joining me today. Today I am bringing you the project I made for the blog hop I was on yesterday for the Pootla blog hop, the team blog hop. And I made this little gift box, um, tall, slim gift box, and it holds a little wine bottle. Okay, gorgeous paper. And um, yeah, I'll show you how I made it. So I'm using the uh, lovely Love You Always Speciality Designer Series paper and I'm using the matching ribbon there, which is the Blushing Bride metallic ribbon. Very pretty, this ribbon. Not, a, not really a pink person, but it's pretty. And this is the sheet of um, the foiled DSP that I'm using. I have um, made projects... Um, with, with the others, um, I recently did um, a gift box with this one and I've made something with this one, which I'll show you. So I made this bag, which is available in a free tutorial bundle um, with about 31 other things, all to do with the mini catalogue. And um, this is a, a free um, offering anybody that um, shops with me gets the tutorial bundle free and that bags on it um, so yeah quite quite cute paper I really like it so um, I'm using blushing bride cardstock and um, and then we're gonna mat with this and I wanted to show you how I cut the mats I started cutting them up and then I thought oh actually I could show you what I'm doing with this so we're gonna do those first so the mat, you want six of them, and they're six and three quarter inches by seven eighths each of them. And I didn't want to sort of like cut a massive um, strip down here. I kind of like to keep as much of it in uh, tact as possible because I might need 12 by 12 bits. Um, so I, let me get my trimmer in because I'd started and then I thought, oh, I need to show you what I'm doing. So I cut, I cut a piece that's uh, five and a quarter, which is six times seven eighths, by six and three quarters, which is the length that we want. And, and I'm just cutting seven eighths off each. Now I kind of think it would look nice if the pattern ran round the box um, as, it, as it was. So as they're coming off, I am numbering them, one, two, and saying which is the top. So as I was doing that, I thought, oh, actually, perhaps I should show you what I'm doing. So I'm measuring seven eighths to that side, which is quite easy to do, taking it off. So that now is number three, and that's the top. So when I stick them down, I can stick them so that they all go in order. So that's number four. And that's the top. So the pattern will run nicely. So that's seven eighths and it's seven eighths there. I did measure correctly. My maths were correct. Always a few moments when that happens. So that's number five and that's the top. So this is number six and that's the top. So that just is helpful for putting it together if it's a random pattern and you're not bothered then you don't need to do that but i just think it will look nicer if that little touch is done so that's why i did that so now for the main box um using blush and bride to match and this measures ten and a half by seven and a half so here on the long side, we are scoring at two and then at nine. And then we flip it to the short side and we're scoring at one and an eighth, two and a quarter. All the measurements will be over on nigesa.co.uk. Three and three eighths. Four and a half, five and five eighths, 
and six and a quarter. No, nope. six and three quarters. So you've got um, a half inch there for tuck it over. Okay, so that's all our score lines. Keep your stylus. And I'm going to bring in our trimmer because this will be the easiest way of doing the next bit. So on this shorter edge here, not the two inch edge, that's the bottom. This shorter edge here at the top, you want to, we want to find the center point of each of these rectangles. And half of one and an eighth is nine sixteenths. So each each eighth is two sixteenths, so nine sixteenths is just the other, so eight sixteenths is half an inch. We want nine, so we're just coming the other side there of half an inch. So that's half an inch there, and we're going over one sixteenth. So half an inch over a sixteenth, and we're just going to put a little mark there so we know where the middle is so we want to so now I'm going to put that score line at that point there actually you can just yeah put that score line it's easier if we don't go all the way up to the top oh making it look difficult there just there on the wee one I'll just do a little mark there. So one and a half over a tad. Mark it there. One and a half over a tad. Mark it there. You can mark it with a pencil if you prefer, but then I just think you've got to rub them out. So as we're going to score, then it doesn't matter about the score line. Uh, there we go and mark it and then I do mark this one as well okay and then I'm going to bring it in my, with my metallic ruler which I prefer now that I can see it I need a big one don't know where my little one is. Then we're going to draw a triangle from there to there and there to there. Or score a triangle. So, using the score tool, just score down. So, I might do all these going that way first. Because that's a little bit easier. And this is what forms that, that closure at the top. And then I'm going to go and score that bit there. Not worried about the other side because we will be cutting a slot on there. But it just makes it very much e easier for, um, for folding the top together if you've put that score line in. Okay. So we'll get these done. There we go. So that's all our score lines done. That one might 
benefit from being a little bit a little bit better okay and then we'll just fold and burnish there we go and then at this stage i'm going to stick my dsp on so because it's easier to do it when it's flat. So that is six, five, that's one, four. See, I'd managed to put them in the wrong order there. So it's a good job I've got them numbered. Three and two. And I just think it's nice that the pattern runs all the way across. So they all they don't meet up because it should go six, five, yes. Four, three, two, and one. Glad I checked that. So they all meet. They all match up. So that is just something to look out for that you're doing left to right or right to left, whichever way you've cut it. So I just think it will make the whole thing flow a lot better. So I'm going to use Tombow to stick these down because I like a little bit of wiggle room. Could rub out those pencil marks, but they're not going to see through. So I'm not going to bother. So a little bit of Tombow. And we have got ourselves a little margin, so that will help to get this straight. We're matching up the margins like so. So I'll carry on and do that, but I'll speed it up for you. There we are. So they're all stuck down. And as you can see, the patterns flow in as you go round. And I just think it's nice. just think that's like the extra little touch that makes the difference. So we are going to cut this rectangle. I'm going to get my long scissors. So we need to cut this bottom rectangle out. And I'll just notch up a bit there get rid and a notch that top there of it and we're going to cut up each one of these score lines at the bottom we're not going to notch in just go straight up because these are all going to overlap each other to form the base of the bottom and uh, so you can have quite a lot of layers of cardstock, so it should be fine for for the bottle. Okay, I might keep that a little bit there. And then at the top here, we want to pinch in the um, the, the 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 triangles that we've that we've made. So the triangles go in and the other bit comes out. So just fold it over like so. And that gives us our top. And because we've folded that bit in, then that makes it easier. When that is stuck together, that that 
that bit that you've turned in will also fold over okay if you didn't it would be more difficult to do that bit all right so it's probably easier at this stage to punch our holes so we're going to punch holes in each one of these bits here to thread our ribbon i've got a cropper dial and that is what i'm going to use now i'm just trying to decide if i need the big hole or the little hole so i'm going to test it out here with the little hole i don't think that's going to be big enough is it to push this ribbon through let me let me see will that go through easily I think it'll be, it will look better because it will sit better if I use the bigger one. So this is a, a three, three sixteenths and that one's just one eighth. So it's only marginally bigger, but I think that will, I just think that will look a little bit better. So that's the one I'm going for. So I'm just going to, each one of these, just sort of eyeball it where we're going to, where we're going to put it. Sort of eyeballing from the top edge. I don't know, what's that? Eighth? About an eighth of an inch down. just easier doing it whilst it's flat than doing it I'm going to punch that in there so I've got it in the right place there we go so that's that so now the fun part of putting it all together. So I'm going to use some Tombow. It needs to be a strong glue. So tear and tape, stamp and seal plus, Tombow like I'm using. Because if it's going to hold a little bottle of wine, you don't want it to fall apart. There we go, that should be enough on there. So then that should just fold over and stick nicely down there. Super duper. So then all we're going to do is close close the end so what i did that just fits across there quite nicely so fit those two on top of each other those two on top of each other and those two on top of each other in it that helps keep the hexagonal shape quite nicely okay so again i'm going to use tombow so you've got a really strong bottom to this box but we are going to add add to it anyway so making sure that they're lined up put that one across like so line this one up on top I had to put a bit in the middle now where's the end? Kind of doesn't really matter about the seam because 
they're all sort of folded over but I am going to give it a little bit of a thought it's there that's the back so that's the front don't really matter so that's like that and then doesn't look very pretty at the bottom there so I've got some scrap there two inch circle because it's made for a two inch bottle then I know a two inch circle will sit nicely over that there and gives it a bit of a prettier edge on the bottom not that anybody's looking at the bottom but it also gives you a little bit of extra reinforcement there I've made a smaller version where I put a circle on the inside as well but that was made with DSP so sort of needed it um, so then stick something long down I've got a long ruler so get me long ruler and just make sure that that's adhered really really well if you wanted to you could put a two inch circle down the inside I'm not gonna think that's quite all right and then we've got a little wine bottle yeah nice little bit of pinot other wines are available and that fits in nice and snug in there and then we just need to thread our ribbon on there so decide where the front is and where the back is so that's the seam so that's the back so we'll have it coming to the front here so just thread your ribbon in Now pull it tight at 90 degrees to where you want your ribbon to fall, tie your bow and it will sit where you want it. So then we'll just trim those edges off. Trim that one off about the same size, height, like so. So there we are, that's our, that's our little bow, which I'll probably faff with. And then we want a little label. So, um, got a bit, uh, I'm gonna use the, um, Pick a lovely pucker punch thing. <laughs> Pick a lovely label punch thing. Um, do you know, I was going to do it in Whisper White, but I'm wondering. Yeah, I'll stick with Whisper White. So I've got some of these cut up, but I haven't got an inch one. Okay. So I need an inch, an inch bit of tag. So I'm using, this is the bundle that actually goes together. This is in the annual catalogue. Uh, where's me just because, just, oh, I've <laughs> already mounted it. And I've mounted these floral things because I'm not sure which one would be better. I haven't got the brush and grind. I think. So, I'm gonna do, just because you could put any greasing on that you wanted. But I think this is kind of, Could have made this three quarts. Oh, I haven't stamped that very well. That's better. Didn't like that side because actually that's no good because it's it's going to wave about. Right. There 
there. I'm going to do that one. I've just thought of another way of doing this. So I might actually cut this down. I can probably do this at three quarters. Let's have a little skeg. If I do this to three quarters, I'm going to trim a tad off that way. Tad. and then to three quarters this way and then what you can do when you're doing small things it helps if you haven't got that end stuck to something sometimes what I do when it's a small amount is I hold it in place with some washi tape There we go, God, full of tips. There we go, that's my three quarters. And then I don't know why I'm putting the printer up there. Printer, trimmer even. And then I'm gonna cut the top. that's the top of my tag and then I'm going to think about what because it's got it's got like leaves on it I did think about using this this leaf maybe have it coming around so I'm just going to get a bit of, a bit of scrap there so I'm kind of matching the paper a bit With that bit of that bit of leaf, yeah, quite like that. Might put some going down there as well. Pretty. Okay. Um. And it's it's a bit long, so we will chop it down a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to take that off the bottom. I'm going to leave it a little bit long because it's quite a long box. So I think that's quite nice. And then I've got a one inch. This is a one inch, isn't it? Prepared it earlier. Of Blushing Bride. So I'm going to Stick that in, cut the end, so I could layer this. I was going to do it so they were the same size, but I think that's quite cool that it's a bit layered on there. So I might just trim that down. So if that was three and a half, we'll go up, up an eighth, there, that's quite nice, like that, that'd be quite nice hanging down there. So I'm going to make a hole in the top, so I'll get my cropper dial again, I'm just going to get my bone folder and just um, go around these edges, sometimes you get a slight raised edge. There we go. I'm not going to stick it down. I'm going to have it so that it moves about. So I'm going to make this hole whilst it's together. I'm balling it where I want it. Lovely. So I'm going to stick this on with a bit of twine. I've ordered, because this is from ages ago, 
but I've ordered. We get a double pack of, of pink and pink and white, and I thought that would look lovely. Um, it's further up here, I'm not even sure it's blushing bride, so it might not have worked lovely. In which case, so here we have it. Yes, it is blushing bride, so that would have been perfect. And I may well swap it out when my order finally arrives. One's just arrived then but it was a different order. So, um, so yeah, I ain't got it. I thought, oh, I'll be able to use the twine, but um, I can't. But it's quite nice, it's white, so it'll go with, um, I've probably cut too much there. It will go with the, uh, the white in the cardstock. So I'm gonna push this through. So that they're held together like that. I quite like that it moves. And then I'm going to push this up under that ribbon. But I'm going to go behind the bow bit. And I'm going to pull it up a little bit higher than I want it. I'm going to tie a knot, so I won't and truly cut too much. There we go. So, slice that off the top there. And that's it. That's my little wine box. It's all finished. And uh, what a lovely gift. What a lovely gift that is. And you could always put candles. You can get long candles, can't you? Sweets. You could, you know, put all sorts um, in here. You don't have to just put um, a wine bottle, but it is quite quite good for a wine bottle, although they do vary in sizes. This one was two inches in diameter and like seven inches tall, which is why that fitted lovely so all the links will be down below to take you to the blog and links to my shop and um, there's still uh, time to take advantage of the joining offer as well if you wish to join up this new catalogue is just wonderful it's full of some great stuff and my orders arrived so i've got some new things to to play with um, i will link to the original blog hop um, as well so you can go and see what everybody else has done i'm just turning it so you can see how the um the pattern flows as you go around nice on your eye okay don't forget to like and subscribe and um i'll see you again soon Bye bye